we've talked about all your big screen offerings. Now it's time to sit back, relax in the comfort of your own home and check out what is on the small screen for you this week. So it's our seven day guide. All your movies, one movie a night. Let's kick off and blimey, drag me to hell, Van. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good one to start on, isn't it? Do, do you remember Drag Me to Hell? I remember the poster. I don't think mm. I even bothered with this. Oh, I loved it. Did I, you? Yeah, I did. I love a schlock horror film. And you know, no one does schlock horror for me more better than Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi is a mm. guy that got me into horror with Evil Dead when I was a kid. Oh, my goodness. Made me yeah. fall in love with Bruce 100%. Campbell. And Drag Me to Hell was very much a sort of, kind of a cheap and cheerful return to the well kind of a project okay. just to sort of I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna do a lap and just prove that I've still got it it was that <laughs> kind of a project uh, basic remit here is you've got Alison Lohman who is a young woman who works at a, a bank like a, a the, sorry the poster is literally someone being dragged isn't yes it? it is yeah she's a young woman who works in the loans department at a uh, local bank she turns down a gypsy woman who just wants a loan to save her family home and the woman takes this rather badly and as, as they do curses her shame Thank you. And you shame me. I think your business is finished here, ma'am. Let's go. Mrs. Ganesh. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's one of those movies. Predictable. A, it's a little predictable. You know, it's the kind of film that if you'd seen it in about 1997, it would have absolutely blown I was going to say, this feels way. like a 90s movie, is it not? It is a very 90s kind of a chiller. Uh, but it, it but it is, you know, it, like I say, it's a once around, it's a one lap around the block kind of okay. a project. It's it's Raimi proving, you know what, I just want to show you that I can still flex it. Well, fans of San Raimi, you'll be watching this anyway. So. Also, decent little supporting offer Justin Long in there as well. There we go. Film for 11.35pm. Now, Sunday... Suffragette is on film for at 6.50 p.m. Mm. Carrie Mulligan, women's rights, uh, you know, the ho- at the time of, like, Emmeline Pankhurst, all that kind of stuff. This was where Emmeline Pankhurst was... In fact, I'll tell you what, as, as we'll find out in the clip, we'll find out who plays Emmeline Pankhurst with the clip. Be militant, each of you in your own way. Those of you who can break windows, break them. Those of you who can further attack the sacred idol of property, do so. We have been left with no alternative but to defy this government. If we must go to prison to obtain the vote, let it be the windows of government, not the bodies of women which shall be broken. Round the back, Rose, round the back. I incite this meeting and all the women in Britain to rebellion. Meryl, baby, who else are you going to get? Yeah. Who else are you going to get? Who else are you going to get? Like, really? Absolutely. That's, that's, but that's it's got not people not like Amory Duff in this, and, mm. you know, it, 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 I found this an incredibly disappointing film. Did you? Wow. Oh, was great. It was just sort of it was just kind of like I, I find it hard to articulate what I found disappointing about it. It's not telling us anything we didn't already know. Mm. It's not exciting you as a movie and I think they thought that this was going to be the British movie that was going to suddenly take the Oscars by storm. It's so forthright and, you know, women's, you know, Kerry Mulligan probably going to be up for another Oscar or whatever like that. And it just didn't hit. And it didn't hit with audiences and it didn't really do much business. And it was just, you know, it, I, I interviewed the producer for this and before it was coming out and trying to get some sort of scoops on it at a panel discussion. Mm. And, and she was just, it was so earnest that you, even before it came out, I was a bit like, oh, groan. And actually, that's what it played out to be. Well, I mean, just for what's on us on Sunday night this week, I just think this really is the best option. And also, as far as, like, true story, kind of historical dramas go, I quite like this. I think uh, uh, Karen Mulligan's performance in it is great. Uh, you obviously don't get a better bit of star appeal than Meryl as Emily Bank. Yeah. First of all. But uh, also, by the way, have you seen the trailer for uh, Karen Mulligan's next one, Promising Young Woman? Yes, I have, yeah. Oh, wow, i got to see that. Yeah, it looks exciting. But actually, what you've just said about this is that when you said Kerry Mulligan's performance in this is great, all I can think of mm. is like Bleak House or something like that. So a very BBC drama. Well, it's That's kind what of this hard is. to avoid with given the subject matter, though. No, I, I know, but my point is, is that you could watch this on telly like oh, people that well, that's, uh, that's, what you're, it... that's what you're doing mm. but this in the cinema when it came out I was a bit sort of like would I have paid money to go and watch this probably not and luckily now thanks to Film 4 at 6.50 on Sunday you don't have to mm-hmm. uh-huh. so uh, should we, Monday Monday one that I wish I'd been able to see in the cinema 
It is uh, it's 1988's Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jim Belushi team-up movie. It's Red Heat. How have I missed this? How have I, you missed I this? I am going to put this in my diary. Right. This is a buddy cop movie, buddy action cop, buddy action cop with movie. Arnie. With Arnie as a Russian who travels. Oh, he's a God. Russian cop who oh, travels to the US the and has to team up with a Chicago cop played by Jim Belushi. Do you know what this key open? Looks like a key to a locker to me. Why don't you ask your bud? You try it. Where is the locker that this key opens? Here is why you mamo Zanitsu. What do you say? He say, go and kiss your mother's behind. <laughs> yes, Arnie struggles with a Russian accent even more than he does just speaking English regularly. Uh, it's exactly the movie you think it is. Fantastic. And it's a mo- it's more amazing to me that he somehow did this after he'd done things like Commando and Predator, and he's like, really. This was so late. The guy thought this was one of his earlier ones. Is this brilliant trash? It is absolutely wonderful trash. And it has (laughs) such great lines as Arnold Schwarzenegger saying the words, you are a stupid. Which is a thing. Love it. So, yeah, Paramount Channel, 10pm on Monday night. Check that out. Well, also check out on Tuesday, Sony Action Channel. Who knew there was a Sony Action Channel? The broadening is the Sony Classics now as well. Sony Movies, Sony Action, Sony Classics, yeah. 10.45pm, The Punisher. The Punisher. Movie I adore. This is the best version of The Punisher. It is the 2004 version starring Thomas Jane and having John Travolta as the villain, uh, Howard Saint. Uh, I've got a clip for you of the presumed dead Frank Castle returning for revenge. It's been five months since my family was killed. I don't see one man in jail. Obviously, you're upset. Upset? Is that the word? I used to get upset when I had a flat tire. I used to get upset when a plane was delayed. I used to get upset when the Yankees won the series. So if that's what upset means, then how do I feel now? Yeah, I absolutely adore this movie. I adore the soundtrack to it. I love the style of it. This is long before the MCU. And I just think Tom Jane, who did reprise the role in a short called Dirty Laundry uh, about six or seven years ago, I think he is just... He's uh, it's, it's between him and John Bernthal for who's the best Punisher. Do you know what? I was just thinking, I was like, have I seen this? And no, I haven't seen this. But obviously with Daredevil on yeah, Netflix... You feel like you have. I feel like I have because yeah. you said Frank Castle and I was like, oh, I know exactly who that is. And, and the, is it John Berth... The Burnthal, Burnthal. Burnthal. Mm. His his portrayal is very, very good. So if but you're a fan very, of The Punisher, uh, mm. it might be good to kind of see the back catalogue of this this kind of franchise of movies. Absolutely. This was the, the I think there, there was a lot of hope that this would get sequels and that it did get repurposed into a reboot uh, called uh, Warzone with uh, Ray Stevenson, which yeah. a lot of people prefer to this to this version. I don't. I think this is a stronger one. This is effectively a, a you know a sort of a, you know high high octane almost cigar like project. I was a very big fan of it, but uh, anyway, on to uh, one that I think a lot more people broadly yeah. are fans of. Well, you mentioned of. that there's multiple Sony channels. This is Sony Classics. <laughs> We're two in a uh, row on so many classics. Yeah, six forty p.m. on Wednesdays. Philadelphia. Wow, what yeah, a movie! What like a movie. Tom Hanks. Was this his first? Denzel. Oscar? Uh, was this what? Was this his first Oscar? Was this Hanks' first Oscar? I think. I think you get this be, and then Forrest, Forrest Gump. Gump. Yeah, it depends which one came first. Mm. I can't oh remember. no, this came first. This is ninety three. Forrest yes, Gump is ninety four. Which... Uh, he's the. And the... then what did he win for? Ooh. I'm trying to think. Top of my head. I know he was robbed for saving Private Ryan. Thank you very, mm. very much, Roberta Benini. But uh, you know, we'll look it up. We'll look it up. We'll look it up. Anyway, so story of a uh, lawyer played by Tom Hanks uh, who contracts AIDS, keeps it from his employers. They discover this and use fraudulent means with which to fire him. And he, of course, hires a rival lawyer played by a somewhat discerning, more homophobic Denzel Washington to take his case. I don't buy it, counselor. That's very disappointing. I don't see a case. I have a case. If you don't want it for personal reasons. Thank you, that's correct. I don't. Well, thank you for your time, counsel. And also, I just love Denzel in this movie. I I just looked it up. He didn't win anything... So he did win for Philadelphia as mm. his first win. Yeah. Then Forrest Gump. He hasn't won a third Oscar. Has he not won a third I Oscar? I thought he had the hat trick. I thought he had, yeah. 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 We've nominated a few times, isn't yes, he? Yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Most recently for Beautiful Day in the Neighbor. Yes, yeah, it is a bit um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I love this film. I think I watched this film way too mm. young. So it was out in 1994. Um, it's timeless in a it way really because, is. you know, 
we we have shows that still talk about the AIDS epidemic and things mm. like that. And you know, like most recently on TV, Pose. You know, which you've mentioned a, a bunch of times. Me, so I still know nothing great. of. Yeah, but. you know, it is brilliant to watch. But if you want to see something that sort of laid the path for films and TV shows yeah. like this, Philadelphia is is that movie. So let's uh, let's move then to another film on the same channel on Sony Classics on Thursday night at 6.50. This is actually one of my favourite Sidney Poitier movies. It's from oh. 1967, uh, by which point I think he was three years off winning an Oscar, I think, uh, from 19... I forget what it was, from 1964's... Oh, what was it? Uh, oh, I forget. Anyway, so the idea of this one is just to serve with love. Sidney Poitier is, uh, is a teacher who moves from, I think it's from South Africa, to London to teach at a Cockney school. This is also the feature film debut of Lulu, who sings the theme tune as well. So, oh, wow. big breakout project. If you've never seen it, very much worth seeing. It's in the vein of something like Blackboard Jungle. Yeah. Uh, with Glenn Ford, things like that. Um, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. I love me well, I love me a 60s Sidney Poitier movie. Yeah. Really do. Uh, and of course, a film I equally love, but for very, very different reasons. Uh, Friday night, I think this is the perfect way to end the week, with an action comedy starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, starring Zac Efron, starring Alexandra Daddario, and starring Kelly Roback, a swimsuit model who it turns out has some decent comedic chops. It is, of course, on Film 4, 9pm. It's only Baywatch. Wait, Summer, do you have time to study later? Yeah, um... Do you just, uh, look at my boobs? I was not my intention. I didn't uh, stare directly at them. You look at them right now. Now I did, because you were talking about them. Testing. Oh, failed. Oh, my god. Well, we're going to be in swimsuits a lot, so yeah. if it's going to be a problem for you. It's not a problem for me at all. Yeah. Cool. All right. You just looked at them again. No, I didn't. Yeah, I was. Did. I didn't. Well, when you point them out like that, it, it's a compliment if you think about it. So Zephron and Dario there. Can't say I blame him. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, were you a fan? I loved it. I, I did absolutely as well. loved oh, it. Terrible reviews. But re ignore the reviews. I know, right? Listen to us. It's brilliant. Exactly. <laughs> what do, what do you, you know? Say? What What do the critics expect on this? Okay, it's <laughs> it's The Rock, yeah, no. Zac Efron. Sort of, if you like Bad Neighbours, you're going to see Zac Efron in a similar kind of yeah, you know, is, comedy yeah, light. Yeah. And it's fun and it's Baywatch. It's not exactly like the the, the original TV show was critic fodder. You know? It's, I know, you've got to take it for what it is and enjoy it. And actually on this occasion, listen to the audiences because the audiences loved it. Critics hated it. It did really well. And now it's on telly. Go and finish your Friday night by watching this. Now that is a good week, isn't it? It is.